Language is also a joint attention behavior because we can use words to share experiences with other people. When I say things like, look at that, or have you been there, I'm sharing my experiences with someone else. Children with autism often have difficulty related to this, with using words to share experiences with other people. The notion behind, or the theory behind, why children with autism may struggle with joint attention is the idea that they have a difficult time understanding that other people experience the world differently, or perspective taking, having empathy for other people in other situations. The notion is that children with autism have a hard time understanding that, and therefore, why would they engage in joint attention behaviors? And lastly, related to social interactions is a kid's play skills. Can he or she imitate peers? Can he or she pretend? Often the notion that a plastic toy is something else or that we would do different things with a plastic toy like feeding a plastic doll or feeding a plastic doll plastic food is difficult for a kid with autism. That notion of pretending is often difficult. So the common characteristics of autism include language deficits, social deficits, and the third one that we want to talk about relates to an excess, behavioral excesses, things that children with autism often, not always, but often do too much of. The first of these behavioral deficits often includes things that we might often refer to as self-stimulatory behavior. Technically, these are repetitive or stereotypic behaviors that we describe as self-stimulatory, and in many cases they are, but they're only self-stimulatory insofar as they provide reinforcement that's self-stimulating. These often include self-stimulatory motor behaviors or repetitive vocal behaviors. If I flap my hands or rock or make strange sounds over and over, these are repetitive, they're non-functional, and almost always self-stimulatory. If I engage in these sorts of behaviors for attention or escape avoidance or to communicate, they're still repetitive, but they're not self-stimulatory. And many of our kids engage in these sorts of behaviors. These sorts of self-stimulatory behaviors, or more to the point repetitive behaviors, are only a problem insofar as they interfere with learning and socialization. We all engage in self-stimulatory behavior. We all do things like tapping our feet or fidgeting with pens or pencils or paper clips or moving our hands around. But those don't typically interfere with our learning, our ability to attend and respond, and they don't usually interfere with our socialization. So for kids with autism, with regard to the learning, self-stimulatory behavior often interferes with that and that they have a difficult time attending and responding when they're engaging in self-stimulatory behavior. With regard to the other piece, the socialization, it can interfere in so much as other kids don't want to interact with them when self-stimulatory behaviors are occurring. So they may occur for all of us, but for children with autism, they interfere with learning and socialization. Another behavioral excess for children with autism often relates to preoccupation with objects or restricted interests related to items. So many kids with autism might prefer interacting with things instead of with people. Of course this interferes with the things that they're interested in, their ability to interact with other people, and their ability to learn, respond, and attend to instructors. In each of these videos, you'll see Colin engaging in repetitive behaviors with these toys, what we would often refer to as self-stimulatory behavior. As Colin flaps these toys in front of his face, he's not using them as they were designed to be used. Behaviors such as this are problematic insofar as they interfere with learning and socialization. So when Colin's engaging in self-stimulatory behaviors such as this, he's less responsive to interactions with others. and with regard to socialization, if other kids are around, he's less interactive with those kids and they may be less interactive with him. And lastly, related to the excesses, children with autism often exhibit things like crying, screaming, physical aggression, self-injury, and people have a tendency to associate these with autism itself. But in fact, in most cases, these relate to the language deficits and learning history. So as we look at some examples in a minute, we'll look at how these sorts of tantruming behaviors are simply more effective than using language or more appropriate behavior. That's the learning history. These sorts of behaviors tend to work well. 
So let's say that I, as a child with autism, want some preferred item or activity. Another child has something that I want. And there are a couple of ways that I can go about getting that. I can use appropriate social behavior and or language to get it. I could ask this child to share with me, or I could exhibit inappropriate behavior. And it's not difficult to imagine how in most cases the inappropriate behavior is simply more efficient, it's more effective at getting that preferred item or activity. In many cases, if I ask another student, if I ask another child for some preferred item or activity, he or she might not give it to me. But the best way to get it, or the most efficient way to get it, is to just take it and run, or to hit that student, or to scream and tantrum to try and get that item. These behaviors are often more effective. That relates to the learning history. Now let's say that I, as a child with autism, want escape or avoidance. You're presenting me with demands, and I want to escape or avoid them. Again, I could use appropriate positive behavior. I could tell you that I want a break or I don't want to do this right now, which may in fact sometimes work. But at least sometimes you may say to me, I understand, first we're going to work. Alternatively, I could tantrum, I could scream, I could run away, I could fall on the floor, I could hit you, I could throw things at you, and these behaviors tend to be very effective at attaining escape avoidance. Or at the very least, they'll allow me to delay demands. These behaviors are effective for me. They're in fact more effective than positive behaviors, and that learning history is what shapes those up. And lastly, let's say that what I want to achieve, what I want to get, is attention from you. There are many ways in which I can go about this, and they include positive behavior. I can participate appropriately, I can use appropriate language, and these will in fact sometimes get your attention. But what will always get your attention is inappropriate behavior, particularly if it's severe. If I tantrum severely or engage in severe self-injury, you will always have to attend to me. That behavior will be very efficient at getting what I want. So to summarize, autism can be a comprehensive disability that involves many different areas of a child's life. But the most common characteristics include the following three things, language deficits, social skills deficits, and behavioral excesses. With regard to the language deficits, these are often characterized by difficulties with verbal communication, receptive language or understanding what other people say, echolalic behavior, prosody or the ways in which I communicate other than just my words, and conversational skills. With regard to the social skills, these are often characterized by issues related to understanding and using nonverbal behavior such as gestures, establishing and maintaining peer relationships, difficulties with joint attention or sharing experiences with other people, and lastly, difficulties with play skills, imitating and pretending with peers. With regard to behavioral excesses or things that our kids do too much of, these are often characterized by things such as self-stimulatory behavior or repetitive behaviors, including both vocal and motor self-stimulatory behavior. Also often a preoccupation with objects or simply preferring things to people. And lastly, excesses almost always include issues related to behaviors such as tantruming, crying, screaming, physical aggression, self-injury, or other inappropriate behaviors.